Your party is 20 points down in the polls. The leader needs to change. And you've lost one of the safest liberal seats in the city. Something significant needs to happen. Can you explain why you should stay on as finance minister? We have to deliver on economic growth, delivering fairness, delivering for Canadians, delivering, delivering on housing, delivering on delivering dental care, delivering pharmacare, delivering economic growth, deliver for us, deliver results, deliver, deliver, deliver on housing. To deliver on making life more affordable, delivering fairness, delivering for Canadians. Could we please give them a round of applause? Hi, oh, sorry. Uh, Laura Stone, Globe and Mail, Deputy Prime Minister. I wanted to ask you, it's our understanding that you hosted some Toronto MPs at your home last night. Can you outline for us how that came about, what they wanted to talk to you about, and how you addressed their concerns about the fallout from the St. Paul's by-election? Um, so I'd say that's not entirely accurate. Uh, John McKay is the chair of the 416 caucus and he chaired an in-person meeting of some 416 caucus members. I offered my backyard because it's in a central location. So we did have a meeting, John chaired it. I think it was a really, really valuable opportunity uh, for us to talk with each other, to talk about the results of the by-election, to talk about what they mean, to talk about hearing what Canadians are telling us, and to talk about working really, really hard to do a better job of delivering for Canadians on the things that they need. On housing, on affordability, on economic growth, and doing it all in a fiscally responsible way so that interest rates can continue to come down. I, excuse me, and can you address the calls for change that are coming from some prominent Liberals who say, you know, following that by-election, something significant needs to happen. The leader needs to change, some sort of policy development needs to happen. There needs to be a, uh, a symbol that, that the party is listening to the results and there has to be a reaction to that. Do you think that, the part, that, that your government needs to make a significant change here? The Prime Minister has my full support. I know he has the full support of Cabinet and I know he has the full support of the vast, vast majority of Liberal MPs. The people of Toronto St. Paul's did send us a message and it is absolutely incumbent on us to hear that message. That message was, things are hard. Life is really challenging right now and you, our government, need to do a better job delivering for us on the things that matter in our lives. Make, you need to do a better job making life easier for us. And I think we are collectively absolutely committed to doing that. We are committed to delivering on housing, getting more homes built faster in Toronto, in Milton, across the country. We are committed to delivering on making life more affordable for Canadians. We're talking today about making life more affordable for our brilliant Olympian athletes, but it's also we also need to make life more affordable for families with kids, with things like early learning and childcare. We need to make life more affordable by delivering dental care, by delivering pharmacare. We need to do that. We need to make life better for Canadians by delivering economic growth, by investing in jobs and growth. And we need to do it all in a fiscally responsible way so that interest rates can come down because we recognize that interest rates have started to come down. That is really good news. But high interest rates are still a real burden on people across the country. So yeah, Canadians, people in Toronto St. Paul's, they sent us a message. They said, work harder, deliver for us, things are hard for us, we expect you to work hard and deliver results and make things easier. And that's what we are totally committed to doing. Next question, prochaine question. Uh, 
Kurt Brownwich, Global News, also for the Deputy Prime Minister. If you could approach the podium again and just make sure I can... I appreciate it. Um, how concerned are you about uh, U.S. retaliation on Canadian companies due to the digital uh, services tax? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, and I think it's worth starting by being very, very clear that Canada's preference is and always has been a multilateral solution on the DST, a multilateral agreement around Pillar 1. Canada also has been and continues to be engaged in bilateral conversations with the United States about a win-win outcome for our two countries, which are so closely connected. When it comes to the DST, Canada has played a big role, and we as a country made a big sacrifice in the work towards a multilateral solution. And we made that sacrifice by agreeing to pause our DST. We committed to doing that until the end of 2023 because there was an international commitment to get Pillar 1 done by then. That didn't happen. And we didn't get Pillar 1 done by the end of June either. And it was simply not reasonable not fair for Canada to indefinitely put our own measures on hold. I think it's also really important for Canadians to understand that a number of other countries have a DST in place right now and they have had a DST in place for a number of years with no retaliation. Those countries include our G7 allies and partners, the UK, France, and Italy. And as Canada's finance minister and as Canada's deputy prime minister, I can't accept Canada permanently being in a discriminated position. I can't accept Canada permanently or indefinitely being in a worse position from our allies. So that's why Canada needed to move forward. And then just in closing and addressing sort of the nub of your question, we have acted collaboratively at all times. We've, we have been and continue to work really hard to achieve a multilateral solution. We have specifically been working very hard and very collaboratively with the US and I am confident that a win-win outcome, a negotiated win-win outcome for Canada and the US is absolutely possible. And we've been very clear with the US, with our multilateral partners about Canada's position and where Canada would need to go absent a multilateral deal. And then just finally, you know, on the question of retaliation, um, we, we really believe a win-win outcome is possible. Um, we believe that the way to achieve that is to be, to negotiate in good faith, to negotiate creatively with our multilateral partners and with the U.S., and also to be strong. Thank you. And a quick follow-up from our um, Ottawa Bureau. Um, your party is 20 points down in the polls, and you've lost one of the safest Liberal seats in the city you've represented largely due to voters' concerns around the cost of living and their finances. Can you explain why you should stay on as Finance Minister? Well, that's a choice for the Prime Minister, of course. Um, but what I will say is there was definitely a clear message from the voters of Toronto St. Paul's and I think it's really important for our government to hear that message and to act on that message and that message was things are hard life is hard you as the government need to act and deliver to make life easier for us we hear that and we know that we have to work harder and we have to deliver and show results for Canadians. 
we have to deliver on housing. We have to deliver on making life more affordable. We have to deliver on economic growth and jobs. And we have to continue to do all of that in a fiscally responsible way that allows interest rates to continue to come down. So that's what we're committed to doing. Next question, prochaine question. Hi, this is for Minister Freeland again. Uh, Katie Newman, CBC I don't Minutes. want to presume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so last week, Ontario Finance Minister Peter Bethlen Falvey asked you to pause the implementation of the DST, uh, fearing that it puts targets on the backs of Canadian industries. You've gone ahead and implemented it anyway. Can you explain why? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I gave a pretty full explanation. Um, but maybe let me emphasize um, right now, a number of our allies and partners, including G7 countries like the UK, like France, like Italy, have a DST in place. They are collecting revenue from international tech giants, and that is revenue they are using to invest in their people. It is just not appropriate. It's not right for Canada to accept indefinitely being in a worse position than the UK, than France, than Italy. It's just not okay. There's no justification for that. And I think we are all agreed as Canadians, we have such a crying need for investment in so many things in our country, whether it is housing or making life more affordable or investing in productivity and growth. And we also know that we need to make those investments in a fiscally responsible way because we want interest rates to keep on coming down. So we need revenue for those investments. And the current, in the current situation, Canada is worse off from some of our allies, allies who are not facing any retaliation. That's just not fair. It's just not okay for Canada and Canadians it's not in the national interest. And it's my job to fight for and defend the national interest. And I do want to emphasize that at every, every step of the way, we have been very clear with our international partners about what we are doing. We have had detailed conversations with the US working towards achieving a win-win outcome. And I have a lot of optimism around Canada's ability to get there. And the USTR continues to express concerns about Canada's decision to move ahead. Uh, so could you just explain when the last time you spoke with your US counterparts about this was and what did Americans say about potential retaliation and how worried are you about what happens next? So Matt, my counterpart is the Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, who has been the U.S. lead on the Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 conversations. Um, I had supper with her about 10 days ago. Um, we have had detailed, constant conversations about this. We have been very transparent and very clear with our U.S. partners about the steps Canada needed to take absent a multilateral solution. And we have had and continue to have detailed substantive conversations with our U.S. partners about a win-win outcome for Canada and the United States. And that's something that we are very committed to working on and I am optimistic that we can achieve and I do really want to underscore here a number of other G7 countries a number of other partners of Canada and the US UK France Italy to name just a few currently have a DST in place and are not subject to US trade retaliation and you know, as finance minister and deputy prime minister, I just can't accept Canada indefinitely being in an inferior position to other countries who are our partners and allies.